I've got a giant block of text here, and what I'm trying to figure out is at what point are there four consecutive characters that are distinct? What I mean by that, if we look at the first four characters here, those ones highlighted, you can see the F. F is repeated in that sequence of four characters, so that's not what we're looking for. If I look further down the line, highlight four characters, you can see Z is repeated. Uh, again, if we look at you know four more, C is repeated there. Uh, at some point in this file, there's going to be four consecutive characters where all of them are distinct. And that's the position I want to find, and that's the answer I'm trying to look for. Let's take a look at a smaller example. So I happen to know that the answer for this is 10, position 10. Um, so again, if I look at the first four here, it looks like n is repeated. So I have to continue on. I look at the next four, n is still repeated. Look at the next four, again, n is still repeated. R, F, N, T. So now we have a, a place, this is the first time where we've seen four consecutive characters that don't repeat themselves. So what I'm looking for is this position right here where my cursor is. So this is 10. I'm going to constrain myself to use Vim in order to solve this problem. And so my first thought was maybe I can write a regular expression to, to figure this out. Long story short, Nope, I could not do that. <laughs> I think it may be possible. It probably is possible. So if you if you have a way of doing it with a regular expression, uh, let me know in the comments. I would I'd be interested in knowing what that is. So I had to get a little bit creative, but that's that's part of what makes it fun, I guess, when you're doing these types of things. And so here's what I'm here's what I'm proposing we can do. I am still going to use a regular expression to solve this, but. The reason I think it, that it wasn't working for me, that I was struggling so much, was that because everything is just all on one line. And sometimes that makes it a lot harder trying to come up with the right, just the right regular expression because um, it can be really tedious in some cases, especially with the, the type of regex that I'm going to write to solve this. Um, so if I can find a way to simplify this even further, then I should be able to come up with a slightly simpler regex that will still find the, the solution to the problem. Here's how I think about actually getting to the answer. I think I, I basically start at the first of the of the string of text. I look at the next four uh, characters and I ask, you know, is are there any is there anything repeated? If there is, um, I move on to the next. So basically we chop one off and we just do that again. So I look at the next four characters, if there's repeated characters, then chop it off, move on. And I just keep doing that until finally uh, those first four characters do not have a duplicate within them. And that's the answer. So really we're just, whoops, uh, we're just moving down this string to the right um, as we progress. But there's no reason we can't say, uh, or we can't think of it as moving down like in columns, because we'll still be able to know how far we came, but the thing that we have to look at or consider will will be a little bit easier um, because there's going to be less data. So that's how I'm hoping to simplify it. I'm going to break it up into uh, as many rows as I can, and it, it shouldn't screw up. Like we should we should still be able to find what position we're at because we know how many. Um, rows we've come down and we can look at how many columns we went over, which is always going to be four in this case. And of course we're not going to manually copy each one, chop it off, and keep doing that. That would take that would be impractical, especially on our original data set, which is like 4,000 characters. So of course we can use a macro for this. So um, QQ, begin recording. I'm going to just yank the line with YY, P to paste it, X to chop off the first character, and then uh, Q to stop recording. Now I want to replay this macro, and I want to replay it. If you think about it, it needs to be replayed as many times as the string is long. And so what I'm going to do, um, I can do an execute, and then I can build up in my execute command, I can build a norm normal command. So norm, and then um, I'm going to add a space here. Um, so I'll explain this in a second. Let me just type this out. Call, we're going to do a dollar sign, another dot, 
and then at q. So what is this? This is an execute command where I'm building a normal command that's using like a dynamic value. So like call with dollar sign as a function, and that's going to give me the end of like it, it's basically like what is the position um, at the end of this line, and so that's going to be some number. The reason that I'm using execute is so that I can like interpolate that that function result into this normal command, and then the normal command is used to be able to execute normal mode commands, but down on the command line. So like I, I could do this if I knew exactly what this number is, uh, what this call function is giving us. I could just do this like in normal mode. I could just type you know like 50 at q, and it would replay it 50 times. But since I don't know that, that's why I'm using execute. And so let's run this. That replayed it, you know, some number of times, and we have this nice triangle looking shape. I am only interested in the first four characters of each of these lines, and that's because uh, this chunk of text or this chunk of text that's just redundant on this first line. I'll still get to that um, down later on a later line. So to chop everything off, everything else off, I can do a, a normal command and I'm going to use the range percent sign and that means basically just the whole buffer. So norm 4L, which means move my cursor to the right uh, four places. And then we want a D dollar sign because we want to get rid of everything until the end of the line. So if we run that, you can see that that chopped off everything except the first four characters of each line. Now we're on to the tricky part, which is writing a regular expression now that we've simplified the problem a little bit. And um, to be honest, I just kind of played around with this until I found something that finally worked. I don't know if I can explain this very well. Hopefully it makes at least a little sense. I'm just going to paste it in here um, and we can talk about it for a second. So there's a few things going on here. We've got some capture groups and we've got, uh, I think this is called a back reference, this slash one here. And then we've got this thing, which we'll talk about in a minute. <laughs> so the first of all, the capture group. So you've probably seen this. I've used this before in other videos where uh, we want to specify the notion of capturing something. So we want to capture basically any single thing. I want to capture that so that I can use the back reference to reference it later on in the in the regular expression. And that's kind of how you can say, uh, like you know, like if you look at this line, there's an n, and then later on there's an n. You could you could use this technique to be able to find those duplicates. And so that's the that's the inner capture group along with the back reference. And then there's an outer uh, group as well, but that one is a little bit different because it's preceded with this um, percent sign. What that is doing is it says that I'm not interested in uh, capturing the value of this. I just want to group, uh, I think it's called an atom. I just want to group this these atoms together so that I can apply this thing. And so what is this thing? So I don't actually know what it's called. We, we can look at the help docs though. So it says that it matches with zero width if the preceding atom does not match at the current position. The example I think is a little easier to understand. So basically if you have foo and then uh, bar and then at bang slash at bang, that means any foo not followed by bar. So it's kind of a way to like invert what you're trying to match on. And so that's perfect. That's the perfect tool in our case because we don't want we don't want the lines that do have duplicates. We want the lines that don't have duplicates. So what this is basically saying is find me uh, something where it's repeated and then I don't want that. <laughs> find me the first instance of that. That's the best way I can explain it. The other, the other stuff here is just kind of necessary to make it work, I guess. So I'm just going to uh, use the find command. I think it's called find, uh, but if you do slash um, you can search your buffer, uh, in this case, using a regular expression. And so now you can see, um, if I hit enter, I'm jumping directly to that first instance where those four characters do not have duplicates. So that's perfect. That's what we want. Because if I, if I look what row I'm on or what line I'm on, that helps me get my answer because I know that I've come down six rows. Now I'm on row seven, and I can just count the length of this line here and that gets me uh, 6 plus 4 which is 10 which is the answer in this 
um, example problem. And I can programmatically show that it's 10 by, um, by doing this. I can clear uh, this current line. I cleared it into the unnamed register. And now I can enter um, the expression register by doing control R followed by an equal sign. In here, I want to find the length of the thing I just copied. I can paste this in here by doing control R double quote. And so now I'm going to find the length of that string. And then I can add that to the line. So this is a line function. Um, I'm asking it to tell me what line I'm currently on. And I want to say minus one because, because math. <laughs> so 10. So now if I want to get rid of everything except this answer here, um, I can use, I can go into normal mode, use a global command. Uh, I'm just going to match any line that has a digit, which is going to be only this line. And we can use our new superpower, which is this thing I don't know the name of yet, but I'll find it and try to post it in the video or something. Um, so we've, we've inverted our match. So now that now we're not looking for things that have a digit, we're looking for things that anything that doesn't have a digit. And we want to just delete that into a black hole. And so that's how we can get our answer. And so this is just a sample, an example problem. So let me replace this with the actual input that we're given. And I'm going to save that file. Now I'm going to show you something cool that I've been doing that helps me solve these types of problems. So I've saved this input file. Um, let me show you another file. This is where I have the actual steps that we just talked about. So everything we talked about should be in here. This is just a normal, normal file. There are a couple important things to notice though, which is um, there's some control characters in here which are, are non-printable. So for example, if I wanted to type escape, I would have to do control V followed by the escape key. And that's how I would get that, uh, I don't know what you would call it, a key code or something. Um, but anyways, I have this file, which is basically just a Vim script. It's not Vim script, but it's just commands as if I had been typing them into the Vim editor. So if I save this, uh, I can now I can run this script against the input file by doing uh, vi-s -s for script in, and I can do solution. And I guess before that, I need to have my input.txt. So if I run this, this should give me the actual result, which is looks like 1640. So let's check that. 1640. There it is. So that's the right answer.